Hello and welcome to Cooper Software's video demonstrating how to use the cross-section spreadsheet. There are many ways to calculate earthworks cut and fill volumes and we've discussed these before in our video and blog how to calculate cut and fill for earthworks projects. So one of the methods discussed is the cross-section method and today we will show you how to use the cross-section spreadsheet to calculate cut and fill. You can download the spreadsheet from our blog it also includes the grid method sheet, which you can learn how to complete in our next video. What is the cross-section method? The cross-section method is when you divide your site plan into equal parallel sections. Imagine slicing a knife through the earth at regular intervals. For each cross-section, the cut area and the fill area is calculated. And then for each cross-section pair, the cut and fill volume of the section between them is approximated by finding the average area of the two adjacent sections and multiplying by the distance between them. So for the whole site, the total volume is determined by adding all the pairs of cut volumes and the fill volumes together. So what does the spreadsheet do? So the spreadsheet creates a graph showing the profile of the existing and the proposed for each section. This shows the existing levels in blue and the proposed in orange. It also calculates the cut and fill area for each section. And this is shown in the profile graph to the right of your data. Then it calculates the overall total cut, fill and net volume. And that is shown in the results table at the top of the spreadsheet. How to record cross-section data. First of all, you will need a copy of your site plan with the existing and proposed levels defined. Secondly, check the scale and units of your site plan. You need to know the scale to calculate the length of your cross-section, the distance between them and the distances along the cross-section where the elevation changes. And now you're ready to draw your cross-section lines. So you can either hand draw them to match your requirements or you can draw them in CAD. So whichever method you decide, you do need to number the lines. One, two, three, up to however many you have. And once your cross-section lines have been drawn, you can collect your data. You now need to take off the existing and proposed levels and write them next to each significant change in elevation and then this will produce the cross-section. Okay, so an example showing one way to do this is in this image, and it is key to use your fine pen or pencil here to ensure that you can fit in the two levels and so that they still remain legible. In this example, the levels have been defined using contour lines. So for each contour where there's an elevation change, make a mark on your section line and write the level. So I've used two colours to make the marks, black for the existing and written the level above the section line, and then pink for the proposed levels and I've written that below the line. The start of the section is zero distance and then you measure from zero along the line to get the distance for where the change in elevation occurs. The distances for the changes for the existing may well be different to the distance between the changes in the proposed. Use a ruler to measure the distance in centimetres, millimetres or inches and then multiply to scale it. Alternatively, you can use a scale ruler with a compatible level, which means that you don't need to complete that multiplication sum. This I find is really handy and a quick tool to use. it's now time to input that into the spreadsheet. So first of all, open the spreadsheet and select the section method example tab so that you have the sheet on screen. You'll notice that this sheet is protected and can't be amended. Before starting your own sheet, we recommend that you view this example so that you understand what your finished cross section results should look like. The next thing to do is to open the second tab called section method this one you can edit and you can enter your data into. So then enter your units of measure and the distance between each section at the top of the spreadsheet. 
The fourth thing to do for each section is to add your data. So first input your cross section data from the existing and proposed sections that you've recorded. As you do this, the cross section graphs and results tables will update and you'll be able to see any anomalies or errors as you enter the data. It is really important here to check that your visuals are as you would expect them to be. So once all the data has been entered, you'll have your cut and fill volume calculated in each section and the total volumes and the net volume for the entire grid. Okay, so you can now use this data to estimate the cost of your project. At Kubla, we also make an application for calculating cut and fill. This is called Kubla Cubed. It's an easy to use and affordable cut and fill estimation software. The free version that's available is Kubla Cube Lite, and you can use this to calculate flat areas against existing topography. On top of that, in Kubla Cube Professional, you can calculate against complex proposed surfaces like trenches, roads, retaining walls, and slopes. There are many advantages of using software over a spreadsheet, such as the speed, the ability to display the models in 3D, and the capacity to export cross sections and drawings of your project. If you complete a lot of cut and fill projects, it's worth checking out our dedicated cut and fill software, Kubla Cube, to save you time and money and for a superior reporting and visualization experience. Good luck with your projects. You can find the links to the spreadsheet and Kubla Cubes in the description. If you have any questions, please post in the comments.